Good morning. How are you guys doing? Good. Nice seeing new faces and old faces. So I'm looking healthier than last year. <laughs> okay, so today my talk is going to be on common mistakes when starting on, on a WordPress blog. Okay, so firstly what made me really talk on this, I realized there's a lot of people who say they have been doing WordPress blogs or doing WordPress websites, but then when you go to the actual site, you'll be wondering, see, when we are going have been doing it for five years, and then the simplest things that they should have taken care of on that site, they didn't. So I just picked on about 10, 10 things, and then I put the sources of where I got them, and then you actually see more mistakes that people make when they're starting. So on the first one, uh, I to I'm talking about uh, the platform, the platform we used. Are we all aware that there's uh, WordPress.com and WordPress.org? We are. Okay, so usually when you're starting a platform, really the first question to be asking yourself, whether it's a web website or a blog, is uh, is it going to be something serious or I just want uh, something online where people will read about it and all. So the difference then usually comes on um, how it is then going to be shown on your server. Firstly, like when you're using WordPress.org, you get uh, the chance to actually name your website depending on the domain you choose, and you get full functionality on designing the website and everything. So I just gave an example there. First, let's say when you're using WordPress.org, that's when you'd find, let's say, a website written www.cisosimulo.co.w. And then for WordPress.com, this is the commercialized version. So when you actually get there, you are given suggested names to use. And then that's when you find uh, sites like maybe Cisosignolo WordPress.com or WordPress.Cisosignolo or that. We've seen that. We've seen that. So usually when you're choosing uh, what to use, if it's a platform, if you want to go business-wise and even if it's a blog and you want it to go big, the first thing you should choose on a platform is a self-hosted site, meaning you buy your own domain, you install WordPress there, and then you actually design your own thing without having to use the commercial, commercialized version. Okay, so I just uh, then also did a screenshot. I'm not sure, is it clear? This is, can you see? Okay, but this is WordPress.com. I think I opened this about two or three years ago. And they, I think I only posted about two things. And then the rest of this post they were depending on what I chose as my favorite or what I'm interested in. And then they come automatically. So if you look at the side, which is supposed to be the editor side, all you can do is just add a, add a blog post or add media and comments. That's all you get from the commercialized version. And then the design template, everything, is dependent on how the first one you choose when you're starting. And then this then comes to when you're now actually using, let's say, your own bit domain, either on your local server or if you, you, get, you have it hosted. This was on XAMPP. But then, you see, when you install, you actually have actually more options on editing. I'm sure we're all aware of this. Okay. And then the second common mistake I then found out was, especially on the issue of the WordPress installation. How many people, if, especially if you're a newbie, have really had a hard time? Like for me personally, I had a hard time. I remember if it was Nigel, I actually aped him this time, asking how do I get my site not to have the WordPress uh, name on it. And it, 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 you'll be thinking it's something simple, but it's really not simple if you're a newbie. So the WordPress installation, usually, uh, for the subdirectory, you can have, let's say, if you do not, if you just have that zip folder and you install it directly, it results to this. Okay, usually it results to us having a directory that's got the WordPress name on it. And then, if you actually choose all the files inside the folder and you post them to your own folder written or named let's say be it the site or organization or whatever you want to call it, that's when you get the subdirectory that then gives you the name specifically. 
So for example, this is just an example. Uh, if you notice like on the local host, I had like Tafikwam's gate that. For you to gate that, it means you open a folder, let's say written Tafikwam's, and then you open a folder written gate. And then the gate one is where you put the WordPress files inside, and then you put in Tafikwam's. That's when how you get the full at, uh, personalized directory. If you don't do that, it results to that WordPress. And you really don't want anyone searching your site and really seeing that it's WordPress do. So I just wrote the installing WordPress in a subdirectory called WordPress. The WordPress zip file places all core files in a folder entitled WordPress. Usually people make the mistake of uploading all folders instead of uploading the files contained in them. Anyone made that mistake before? And did, is there anyone who knew how to get that? And then, uh, if we, it's, a, it's really a common mistake. I actually Googled how many people do this mistake, and it was over a million. I think I have the screenshot there. And then for the next mistake, uh, the basic security checks. The good thing is Charles has already talked about this. Basic security starts username. There's a difference between a person who's got their username admin and a username Caesar. Like admin is so obvious to everyone. And the password using admin, admin, and using the default password that will be given by there. Uh, I was actually searching how many people have actually made this mistake on WordPress, and it's actually more than a thousand websites have had people using the default admin, admin. And then the funny thing is those people actually go on the WordPress site and start complaining that my site was hacked. And when they're asked really what, <laughs> what really happened, you get to the, solu to the solution that the person used the default username, default admin. And that's an important, just basic security check. And then we've got the issue of permalinks. How many know what permalinks are? Okay, we've got an issue of permalink structures. I've seen uh, websites where people just don't change the permalink structure. And you get, let's say, when you're uh, going on page to page, uh, different pages, you see there's question mark, question mark, comma, comma, and you don't understand why I clicked home, and instead of it just saying home, it's got question marks and all those funny signs. It all starts from the permalink structure. I think for WordPress, the good thing is they, they really thought about this and they knew one way or the other things need to be personalized. The default permalink structure, usually when you start WordPress, is the plain one, where you can get, let's say, PA123 question mark, and that doesn't make sense. So if you, you want your visitors there, sometimes a person can go to home and they want to copy that link in somewhere. And then when they send it to someone, it won't make sense that they're saying go to your home page, but it's written one, two, three question mark. For me, personally, I think using a custom structure or a post name is really, really, for a blog post name. And for a custom structure, you then personalize on how you want the permalink to look like. You can go post name only, there will be month, date, uh, minute, second, you can go as far as you want. And that will lead people more directly to know where they're going and to, if they click a certain page, they'll actually see the page there than having things scribbled and they don't know what, what it means. The default tagline. Most people also forget to choose, the, to, to, to remove this. Default tagline when you install WordPress, let's say on wordpress.org, is just another WordPress site. And uh, uh, no matter what theme you put or anything, if you don't change the tagline, you have that, just another WordPress site. And the default tagline is, is uh, the, one of the most mistakes made by beginners, first of all, and it carries a weight on your search. If a person, Google's just another website, WordPress website. Your website will actually come as part of those results because you didn't remove the tagline. And now if you go to the next one, it is actually used as um, 
uh, a description for your visitors, if you don't remove the tagline. If you go to that site and the description, or if you Google that, that domain, the description, it will actually write just another web page, website and then it will come, the other information will come after. And then we've got the sample content, the sample content you use uh, on, your, on your website. Sample content is that default page that's there when you install your website, website WordPress website, when you're starting. You should trash, trash that. You go to Hello World and you trash. And here I actually put a screenshot of how many people forget to do that. They put pages and everything. But then if you search Hello World, welcome to WordPress, it actually has 10,400,000 results. And if you actually go down, you would actually see people's actual websites, not explanation what it means or anything, but you see actual websites. But because they did not remove that trash page, they did not trash that uh, Hello World page, it actually comes as a result. And if you want to boost your SEO and all that, it's good for you to trash the sample content. Uh, too many plugins, they can become more harm than good. I think that's a common mistake that's made by beginners. You install, you realize, okay, there's this plugin, you can do this, blah, 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 and you have got more than 20 or 30 of plugins on your site. But then actually what people don't realize is the plugins then actually slow down your site. They conflict. Some plugins don't work all together. You can't have, let's say, uh, Visual Composer and another, uh, another item there. Because when you get to the page, it actually conflict and it will make your site even have more mistakes than it should. They increase the site vulnerability. It, like what Charles was saying, if you have a certain plugin and it's got a lot of vulnerability, imagine having 10 of them installed and they all have different vulnerabilities and different hackers are attacking you left, right and center. Memory and site lo uh, loss speed. Uh, I think that was supposed to be low. Uh, what happens is the more plugins you have, the slower your site begins. And this also affects uh, like uh, the optimization and also plugin management. The general management of your plugin, if you've got five uh, plugins, you, you, can, you are capable of managing them faster and quicker than having, let's say, 40 plugins. You can keep all, uh, with all the updates and everything. And then another common mistake I, uh, I wrote about in this PowerPoint, uh, the WordPress updates. It is important for everyone to update. Uh, I've seen most people have sites and they don't uh, uh, update their sites. And they'll say, uh, okay, maybe the new version is going to affect my site or my site is going to break. To be honest, if you're using a theme and plugins that are well coded and either you bought them or you downloaded them on a, a faithful site or anything, a WordPress update shouldn't break your site. Updates are meant to improve speed, efficiency, and user interface. If not updated, this can lead to a vulnerability in your site security. As long as your theme and plugins are coded correctly, your site will not break. And then another common mistake is the issue of backups. Most people then concentrate on backups only after they've lost all their information. And that's when they start thinking, okay, how do I back up? How do I do that? But for every site, you should generally always back up. There are a lot of plugins you can use uh, for backups. I've listed some. We've got Updraft Plus, Duplicator, Backup, Buddy, Vaultpress. And this can be done by choosing either you can do it with your host provider or you can just use a plugin and always back up your site. Uh, also on the issue of common mistakes, we've got image optimization. Optimized images improve the overall performance of your site and they make your site actually load faster. So I just put a screenshot there indicating like let's say when you concentrate on the media settings, you actually have uh, how you can actually set the image size, thumbnail size and everything even when you are uploaded and save those changes. Okay, so I just put some references on the common sites and uh, what I found online, and it, it hope it might help someone, especially the newbies. Thank you.